Is that all right? Sound good, I mean, I could do another if you want a safety. Yo, it's Tyler Bryant, hanging here with the good folks at Fender, checking out my brand new custom shop signature strap. Yeah, so I got Pinky, the original one, when I was 16 years old, I believe. And um, I carried that guitar with me all around as I was playing shows around Texas. And I moved to Nashville at 17, and I took Pinky with me, of course, and started my band, The Shakedown, continued to carry it around, ended up getting a, an opportunity to go on tour with Jeff Beck. So I took Pinky, got to play it on stage with Jeff. You know, it was my guitar. We played um, the New York State Fair, and I met Steven Tyler, and after the show, he wrote, Pink, it's like red, but not quite on the back of the guitar. I just made so many great memories with the guitar. Uh, one, one that stands out was we um, inducted Steve Cropper into the Songwriting Hall of Fame, and I had to sing Midnight Hour for him. And I was so afraid I was gonna forget the lyrics, so I wrote them on top of the guitar. And not long after this, the guitar got stolen in Spokane, Washington, and was missing for five and a half years. I woke up and Caleb, the drummer of the Shakedown, was like, dude, you left the back door of the van wide open. And I just had that sinking feeling, knowing that the guitar was gone. And um, I stayed at that hotel for days, trying to talk to everybody, basically became an investigator, trying to figure out where my guitar went. And um, we had shows to do, so we, we borrowed guitars from friends, and it, it just wasn't the same playing my guitar. I was so used to that one, and plus it just it had so much history and had done so much life with me, I was devastated. We were rolling through Texas in 2013, right around my birthday, and I stopped to see my family, and my mentor, this guy named Roosevelt Twitty, he showed me the blues when I was just a kid. He was gonna come over. So we unloaded our band trailer, set up all our amps and guitars, and my parents gifted me a shell pink Strat that looked just like the one. It felt just like it, same neck, same body, same pickups. One of their friends actually threw in a thousand bucks to get it for me as well. So it was a lot of people that cared about me kind of going out on a limb to get me something that I could use, to get me a tool that I needed. And um, that was the last night I ever saw Mr. Twitty. He played it. And he was there and it was like, all right, this is my guitar going forward. So that was Pinky too. And uh, flash forward to 2018, we're out on the road um, supporting ACDC and Guns N' Roses because life is crazy. And I get a phone call from River City Guitars in Spokane, Washington. Hey, uh, you don't know us, but we have your guitar, the original Pinky. And I freaked out, I couldn't believe it. They read off the serial number, sent me pictures. They had sanded off the pink, it's like red, but not quite. They had sanded off the lyrics and all this, but they didn't change the serial number plate, you know? And they found it in a used car dealership in Spokane. It came in in the trunk of a car and the guy traded it for $1,000 off of an, on a used car. Can you believe that? And the guitar shop just bought it and sent it to me. They overnighted it to me, so I had my guitar. Then I had two of the best pink strats in the world, and now I have four of the best pink strats in the world. <laughs> So I've always had a very close working relationship with Fender, and I've always told the folks there that I would play these guitars, whether they were nice to me or not, because I love this instrument. And um, when they tabled the idea of doing a signature model guitar, I was beside myself. And 
They said, you can just send the original to the custom shop. And I was like, no, I'm coming with it. So I flew down, I grabbed my wife and we flew down to the custom shop and it was like, um, you know, going to the chocolate factory or something, walking around. I wanted to play everything, even though I knew exactly what we were doing. We were there to just make the perfect pink guitar, in my opinion. And I think we've done that. So everyone was so cool and, and paid uh, so much attention to detail, which I really appreciate. Um, and yeah, it was, a, it was a painless experience. The first prototype, I got it and played it that night out on the road and then um, pretty much only played it. We, we then went and did a European tour and I didn't even take the original, I just took the first prototype because it was so close. I, and I was very meticulous about comparing the pickups and everything and I just did multiple recorded tests, listening and sending them to my friends going, can you tell the difference? And people were getting it wrong, you know? They were saying, this one's the original. And I was even getting it wrong. So they, they really knocked it out of the park at the custom shop, man. This is, it's, it's in my opinion, it couldn't, it couldn't be any better. Out of my two pink strats, the custom shop model is based mainly on Pinky 2, which is the only two differences are the pick guard and the bridge pickup. But once I put this bridge pickup in the second pink guitar, I just couldn't imagine having a guitar that didn't have that. The neck is the same exact shape. The neck and middle pickups are the exact same. Both are alder bodies. Um, you know, if you, if you felt them, they feel identical. Uh, but then you've got this secret weapon down in the bridge that for me just allows me to uh, kind of cut through a mix or step up if I'm playing, you know, with somebody that's a little louder than me or hotter than me. So for the pickups in this guitar, we've got the hand-wound 1960 single coils in the neck in the middle. And then in the bridge, we've got a shawbucker. And this is, is my favorite humbucker in a Strat. Probably my favorite humbucker ever. It's just a great pickup. And in my original one, when I wanted to put the humbucker in it, I called Fender and said, I want to do this. We need to route out the pick guard and route out the guitar. And they said, bring it by. And Tim Shaw ended up putting it in. So that was a cool experience because he's a legend and just a sonic genius wizard character. Five-way switch, which I use all the time. Um, when I was young, there was this guitarist named Alan Haynes that I was obsessed with, still obsessed with his playing. And, and I had this record called Live at the Big Easy. And I, I was just wondering, how did he get those sounds? It sounded like a wah pedal or something. And he was using the five-way switch um, in a way, you know, probably 30 times a song or something. So with this guitar, I can, I'll often play like a verse or something on the neck. And then when it's time for the chorus to get the lift, just flip down real quick. Um, so it's very, it's very useful to me. And then the neck is my favorite shape, which is a 60C. I love the rosewood boards. Um, and uh, yeah, the vintage tuners, I can't go wrong with those. I, if I get a guitar that doesn't have the vintage tuners, I immediately change them. And another thing that we did, which is kind of uh, nitpicky, was put a slightly longer screw in the strap peg, because normally if I get a guitar, it's by the end of the first show that that's fallen out. And we did uh, four springs tightened to the perfect <laughs> tension for the bridge. This is, this is how I set up all of my strats and uh, it works great. You can still use the whammy, it's just, it's a little more work, but it stays in tune wonderfully. so many guitar heroes that I look up to. Um, 
Jeff Beck would be my number one. Was always so inspired by his playing, and then when I moved to Nashville, I got the opportunity to go out and open up for him, and ultimately ended up getting to play on stage with him so many times and, and spend a lot of time with him, and, and was just always inspired at how he pushed it. He was constantly trying to, to outdo himself, you know, and raising the bar for all the rest of us. So he would be my number one. Um, of course, Jimi Hendrix, the Vaughn brothers. Growing up in Texas, there was a, a lot of great blues players like Alan Haynes, Anson Funderburg, you know, some of those guys that would throw it down in that second position and play way back by the bridge, you know. Johnny Winter is a, is a hero of mine, Muddy Waters, Mike Campbell, you know, so, so many, so many. Keith, um, yeah, but Jeff Beck's, Jeff Beck's my favorite. He's my hero. And I got to play Pinky on stage with him, man. You know, it's like, uh, I wish I could send him one of these and just say thank you for, you know, giving me a shot when I was a kid. So over the years, we've had, you know, tons of folks come to Shakedown shows with homemade pink strats that look like mine. The one thing that, that never really quite got nailed was the pit guard. And I've been tight-lipped about who made the pit guard because I always dreamt of this happening, you know? Um, but man, there have been some really good ones where people showed up and they looked almost identical with the relicking. And, um, you know, what the funny thing is, when I got my guitar, it wasn't really relic that much. It had a fresh coat of shell pink paint on it, which is why I chose to leave the paint on this so that people can actually tell their own story with the instrument. This whole thing is, is, a, is kind of a head trip for me, you know, to be completely honest. Um, it's it's a, a huge honor to, to have a signature model with the custom shop, um, to know that I can pick up a brand new guitar. This is a brand new guitar. I just am feeling this for the first time today, and it feels like what I would play every night out on the road. It's, it's, um, it's crazy. Um, I never really uh, thought that I would have my name on the back of a Fender guitar. It's a huge honor for me. Know that it's possible, man. You know, you can you can have your name on a guitar too. It's like, what makes you different than me? It's, uh, it's just you gotta get out there and do it, you know? Here we are, doing it. <laughs> <laughs>